Mind if I join the wake? Quite a yarn, huh? Yeah. You could cooking up a new angle for your column? No, thanks. This one's been grilled, fried, and boiled in every rag in the country. That's all? There's an angle hasn't been touched. Earn your bracelet with a college degree. Hey, what's with you? You tired of making a living? That kind of slime, yeah. Too bad there's still a negative. Only you're not going to print it. Oh, now look, Faraday, why don't you stay in your own department? Can I help it if one of these crooks happens to be a friend of yours? Wait a minute, Mr. Faraday. Everybody shoots off their big mouth once in a while. Sure we do, the whole bigoted bunch of us. Read the headlines, forget the small print. I knew the small print right from the beginning. The beginning was a while back, when my former basketball coach wrote me to do some scouting for him and look up a certain high school player. You could say I was returning a favor for the many tips the old geezer used to give me. And what's a sports writer without tips? The old boy could always use a good basketball find on his team. And Johnny was a find, all right. I'd seen him play here many times. Hi, fella. Who, me? Why not? Well, so maybe you're down here slumming, Mr. Faraday. Good to know my column gets around. Oh, never miss it. Sure, pleasure. Name's Long, Johnny Long. Yeah, I know. You do? I've been watching you, so have others. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm here. Have you got a minute? It'll take an hour for all I care. Uh, do you mind if I dry off first? You made any plans yet for college? No, none in particular. Good. To get to the point. I'm an old Bedford man myself. It's a great place. From what I've seen here, they'd love to have you. I can get you a scholarship if you're interested. Interested? Well, sure. Who wouldn't be? I've had several offers during the season, but well, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm tickled pink at all this attention, only... Well, that's a personal story, Mr. Faraday. Well, the name is Pete, and I didn't bring my typewriter. Well, it's just that an out-of-town scholarship could never bring me the money that I can earn around here doing part-time jobs. See, there's a matter of a couple extra miles to feed. Are you married? Oh, no, no. No, it's just that uh, it's my dad. He's uh, in the sanitarium. And I'm taking care of my kid brother. He's in school. What about a local scholarship? I thought you were plugging for your alma mater. A kid with a talent like yours, I can't be greedy. Why not spread it around a little? Let's say with a guy like Nat Becker. Nat Becker? Stayed? Well, that's really aiming high, isn't it? Not any higher than you're going, and you'll be able to stay in town. Gee, Nat Becker's always had championship teams. Leave him to me, will you? As a matter of fact, I have a hunch where I can find him right now. Well, this may sound corny, but I don't know how to thank you. Then don't. Every man enjoys a good meal. But Nat Becker is one guy who'd turn a healthy habit into a vice. Beef stew. Hey, Nat. Do you mind a spectator? What else is new? Very interesting. Now let me talk. I saw a kid today at a high school. Got absolutely no class, but he never misses a basket. Well, hardly ever. Being on your team would surround him with class. Let your boys look good while he does the scoring. The only reason you'd be lucky enough to get him is because he's got to stay in town to make a living. You interested? Nat, will you quit eating? I ought to be interested. Been watching Johnny Long for months. Why, you old windbag. Next time, give me a chance to talk. Next time, I'll take your plate away. Then what'll you do? Will you? Hiya, Johnny. 
Oh, hi, Mr. Faraday. You know Nat Becker, don't you? You know his reputation. Well, don't let it fool you. In between meals, he's a good coach. Sir, it's a pleasure, sir. Well, there's no use complimenting each other. You're good. Maybe I can make you better. If it's agreed, I'll recommend you for a basketball scholarship for college. Agreed? Oh, and another thing. I run a camp for boys up in the mountains. If you like, come up there and your keep. Teach the kids how to play basketball. Well, gee, it sounds great, but frankly, I can't afford it. I spend my summers picking up some darn good money at Crest Haven Country Club. Crest Haven? Pretty swank, huh? That well, makes for better pickings. I work as a lifeguard. Crest Haven? Oh, well, sure, I've heard about it from one of my boys. Jed Black's got the same idea you have. He's next year's captain, you know him? Well, no, of him. Jed's a good boy. Might even teach you a trick or two. Well, I'll make it a point of looking him up. Oh, well, I gotta go to class. Gee, Mr. Becker, thanks a million. I sure do appreciate it. So long, Keep those grades up. Crest Haven, where wealth is your password and luxury is an everyday commodity. Without the password, you look for the back entrance. It's the kind of a paradise a guy wouldn't mind getting lost in. But then there was Jed Black, one of Johnny's future teammates. He knew his way around, especially the shortcuts. Guarding the guests' high-priced lives and supervising their 18-carat sunburns had its profitable aspects. Particularly with some of the new arrivals. I'm Mike Taft. How do you do, sir? I'm Johnny Long. How do you do? How are you? Oh, thank you very much, sir. Miss Courtney. Hello. How do you do? I'd like for her to have some swimming lessons. Oh, I'll be glad to teach her myself. I won't be difficult. I'm pricing. I beg your pardon? I was born under the fish. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, darling. There was always enough spare time during which Jed could let some of that Nat Becker polish rub off on Johnny. The kind of polish that would make his style more pleasing to the eye. Yeah, pleasing to the eye. I take it you two haven't met. Or have you? No, I uh, suppose not. What do you mean, suppose? If you have or haven't? Well, I guess we've seen each other before. About a minute ago. Well, don't let me disturb a reunion of old friends. I'll just take a rest while you two get to know each other better. You, uh, been here long? Ten minutes. Uh, no, I mean, uh, here at Crest Haven? Oh, I arrived yesterday with my folks. Oh. Are you learning to play basketball? Smart girl. Well, uh, not exactly. Uh, oh. Just... Oh, well, please go on. Don't let me interrupt. Oh, no, no, that's all right. We're, uh, we're all done. Oh. Can I buy you a Coke or ginger ale or something? Thanks. Tell me, uh. do you really enjoy bouncing the ball along, throwing it into that little hoop? Well, no, I really don't, you see, but uh, don't let it get around. Next time I play, some of the paying customers may want their money back. Paying customers? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know. That's okay. Yeah, practice for both of us. Most women don't know how to keep their heads above water, Johnny. If you can teach Lily, you're a better man than I. Easy now, come on. Get it. Turn in your life, Dad. You're through. Isaac's either crossed the moon or me. <laughs> Such intrigue calls for a bracer. What will you have, young lady? My name's Pat. I'd like a coat, please. Uh, how about you? Double bourbon. I had enough chase for one day. <laughs> Johnny? Oh, nothing for me, thanks. Oh, afraid to break training? Training? Yes, I understand you're quite a boy on the basketball court. Hi, Frank. Well, there seems to be a difference of opinion on that. All right, so I don't know the difference between basketball and hopscotch. You should. There's little money in hopscotch. Not much more in basketball. Oh? Melvin, hi. 
Holy smokes, I almost forgot. I gotta meet a friend of mine at the airport. He'll be here in 20 minutes. We've got plenty of time. It's only 10 minutes away. Well, not by bus. Bus? Oh, oh, look, why don't you take my car? It's that uh, yellow Lincoln convertible out front. Oh, thanks. That's very nice. I couldn't. Oh, no, go on. Take Pat along for the ride. I'll put something on. Meet you at the car. Well, thanks very much. You're welcome. It's a nice boy. Yeah, very. Not that nice, darling. He's probably Scorpio. Say, what did I do with my Astorama? Just sitting on it. Yeah. Well. Hiya, Johnny. Hi, Pete. Gee, it's good to see you. Well, I see you didn't exaggerate. Well, what's that? The description in your letter. She's beautiful. Ah, any other professional comments? Lincoln Convertible. Who struck oil? Oh, a fellow named Tab. Not sure it was oil, though. Nice to have friends like that. Yeah, I wonder. Oh, Tab's okay. Don't worry. You'll be driving one of these things yourself someday. <laughs> Thanks You wouldn't be trying to give us the go-by, would you now, Pat? Oh, you were so engrossed in your lunch, I didn't think you'd notice. The day I don't notice you, I'll know I need glasses. Besides, how could I miss you in such distinguished company? Oh, Pete Faraday, this is Mike Tad. Pleasure, indeed. How do you do? Mr. Faraday, Miss Courtney. Mr. Faraday is the well-known sports columnist. Really? Nice to know you. You're Virgo. I can tell. Sorry. Won't you join us? We'd love to, if you don't mind. Mind? I've been looking for an opportunity to talk to Mr. Faraday for quite some time. Oh. You'll be sorry. Oh, I'm afraid you will. Like all sports fans, I'll probably ask a lot of stupid questions. A columnist only considers a question stupid when he can't answer it. Neatly put. No wonder I've always enjoyed reading your column. Thanks. Well, what do you have? Mm, I'll have the uh, club lunch. This coffee for me. Faraday, I particularly like your constant campaign to get the athletes a better break financially. Well, and it stands to reason that some of the big money made by college sports should rub off on those responsible for it. I guess so. When you consider the gates take... Must you talk business on such a beautiful day? I didn't know you were connected with sports, Mr. Taft. Well, I'm not really. I just sort of dabble in it. You know, investments and such. I, for one, have never dabbled beyond the two-dollar window. Don't worry, Pat. There's nothing disreputable about small bets. The large ones are made on Wall Street. Only there, they don't call it gambling. Well, that's one way of whitewashing bookmaking. Good afternoon, everyone. Pull up a chair, Johnny. Johnny. Oh, thanks. I've had lunch. Say, uh, Pete, when you get a second, I I'd like to show you something. Why not now? I drink too much coffee anyway. See you later. But I'm hungry. Well, you go ahead and eat. We'll be over in the court to the finish. Bye. It's a nice fellow. Aren't they always? Well, what's the verdict? You're doing a great job taking out the rough spots. And that'll be proud of both of you. You mean it? I've already stuck out my neck too far to kid you, Johnny. At these rates, all I could afford was a free tour by Johnny and Pat. At a place like this, time should stand still, especially for a guy like me who's in no mood to splurge a year's salary for a longer stay. Even though it had only been a couple of days, they'd been full ones, and long enough to get a pretty good picture of what Johnny was up against. So long, Pat. Bye, Pete. Back in a minute. Okay. Sure is nice to come down. Pat's crazy about you. I should hope so. You know, if you were my protege, I'd probably go after him myself. You're Faraday's protege. That's quite a rating. Something to live up to. Well, I didn't come down here to mingle with the elite. I just wanted to make sure you wouldn't go hi-hat on us and not enter college this fall. Hi-hat? With what? Guys like Mike Taft giving you big ideas. Oh, Taft. He never tell he ever talks to me. He's too busy counting his money. I have a hunch he'll be talking some more. Especially when he gets ideas about counting more money. Don't worry, Pete. I'm a big boy now. I like you that way. So does Pat. So long, Johnny. So long, Pete.
hungry? Uh-huh. Um, onions? What about you? Love them. Me too. Oh, if you could only cook. I can. Then what are you saving it for? Later. How much later? When I'm sure the stars will always look to me the way they look tonight. In what way is that? Close. You could almost touch them. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there for years, but never this close. Will they always stay like that? Everything will stay like this. I can feel it. Came on slowly but surely through all the few days and hours we've been together. I like remembering them. Maybe we won't have to remember. Just look forward. To what? To each other. Could it last, Johnny? Could it? As long as you'd want it to. That's a long time. That's why everything's got to be right. Nothing but the very best for you. I'm looking at the very best already. I'll wait as long as you want. I don't like waiting. Oh, it's not so bad, Johnny. Not when it's for something worth waiting for. Hey, the hamburgers are burning. What hamburgers? That fall, Johnny kept his word, and as Nat Baker and I had planned, he began his freshman year in college. Wanting to make sure I hadn't given Nat a bum steer, I looked in more often than I should have. But with a little convincing, Nat didn't really mind. We didn't want you to know it at first. You know how Nat felt about letting his players become big-headed? But you sure began to look good. Only I couldn't get any definite kind of comment out of the old geezer. It was like trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip. But of course, with Nat, there are some things more powerful than words. And in trying to get a preseason interview, a reporter sometimes has to go to any lengths. Something bother you? Yeah. I'm wondering who to kill first. You or my doctor? Why not make it the doc and save yourself a bill? Me, all you owe is a story. Dig up your own dirt. I'm too weak. Here. Give me that preseason interview and I'll put a chunk of meat on it. With gravy. All right, all right. So Johnny's terrific. I'm building my whole next season around him. He's younger than all the others, but he's got more stuff than the best of them. Now, uh, how about the meat? Well, I don't want a Welsh, but what about the doc? If you don't give me that meat, you'll be needing him.
Hello, Johnny. Well, hello, Mr. Taft. Why did you skip it? Skip what? Oh, that Mr. Routine. I like to think of us as friends. Oh, sure, uh, Mike. Uh, how's Lily? Oh, she's fine, fine. Waiting in the car, counting the money. Made a real killing tonight, thanks to you. To me? Yeah, you were great. And I had a bet on you. <laughs> thanks for the vote of confidence. Any thanks around here come from me. By just knowing you, you let me in on something, and I never let a favor go unrewarded. What's this? Oh, just a fan letter. That's some fan letter. I can afford the postage. Yeah, but can I? Why not? It's good American currency. And you earned it. Earned it? You worry too much. Athletes shouldn't worry. It's unhealthy. Go on, take it. Show Pat a good time. You both deserve it. Well, thanks very much, but well, I couldn't, honestly. All right, Johnny. There's no harm done. But uh, if you ever get short, you know where to come. Well, I don't think it will be, but thanks just the same. So long. So long, Johnny. See ya. Let's go. Wait a minute. Trying to figure out when the moon is going to square Neptune. Huh? How'd you make out? Usual first reaction, scruple and dignity. Oh, yeah. He must be Aries if he's this stubborn. Yeah. Well, it's too early to tell. The longer they take, the harder they fall. Yeah, but this one hasn't even tripped yet. Look, honey, time is money, right? Okay. We'll see who runs out of both first. Now let's go. You drive. Santa Claus comes but once a year. And Johnny was old enough to know that you've got to meet him halfway. Especially if you've got a kid brother. A kid brother like Mickey, whose modest want in his eyes could tug more on a guy's heart than tears. Yeah, when the price tags held the key, a toy shop was no place for Mickey at Christmas time. How come you're breaking training? What are you moping about? Daddy's getting better. Santa Claus will be here soon. Yeah. Empty handed. Hmm? Nothing. You said something. Well, you... you see, Mickey, Santa Claus won't be coming this year. I know. He looks silly in Dad's outfit and beard. It's about that train. Well, what about it? There won't be any this Christmas. That's all right. I'll be getting something else. Mickey, I'm afraid you won't be getting anything. Yes, I will. Loads and loads of baskets. Baskets? Yeah, you won't miss any. I can tell all the kids you gave me each one for Christmas. Hi, Johnny. Sit down. Thanks. Sorry about dragging you out here tonight. Yeah, don't give it another thought. What else are friends for? Well, I felt kind of funny about last time. Ah, forget it. I have. What's on your mind? Well, I'll put it to you straight. I, I need a job, just for the holidays. A little extra cash, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. I'd love to help you, Johnny, but frankly, most of those Christmas jobs are hardly worth your while. However, I do know how you could pick up a fast 500. 500? What's the catch? <laughs> there you go again. Always looking for a trap. There's nothing to fall into. Just relax, that's all. Relax? Uh -huh. Relax. Take it easy at the right time. The right time during the basketball game. What's the angle? Angle. Must you put it that crudely? 
This is merely a business proposition, the kind made by bigger men than you or me. Well, maybe I'm not big enough. I think you will be. As I said, all you have to do is relax and uh, maybe miss a basket now and then. Looks like Pete had your number after all. Pete? Oh, Faraday. The man with the big talk about getting the athletes more money. You don't want talk, Johnny. You want action. Can you put glory in the bank? It's a very good line, but you got the wrong party, mister. I don't think so. Well, then you got another thing coming, because... because I'm not throwing any game. Sit down. Stop jumping to conclusions. Nobody's asking you to throw a game. It's merely a matter of points. Keep the scores closer together. That way you're not letting anybody down. Becker still wins his ball game, and you're $500 to the good. Yeah, who's good? Yours? $500 can buy a lot of things. Well, I'm afraid I'll just have to do without them. Suit yourself. Can I give you a lift home? No, thanks. I've got two legs, all my own. Didn't know it then, but the hook was in. Bring down the points, Johnny, that's all. No one will ever know. You know the point system, don't you? Gamblers don't book bets on which team will win. One team is usually way ahead of the other, just as Johnny's was then. It's how many points they'll win by. So keep the points down, Johnny. That's all the fix there is. Keep them down. Team still wins, the bookie wins, and the betting public loses. What's it gonna be, Johnny? What's it gonna be? to stay honest, and Johnny was going to find out how much he had, especially when there was no time left for rest. Just one steady beat. Pound the stamp. Sink the basket. Pound the stamp. Sink the basket. Pound the stamp. Sink the basket. was anxious to see you. She even wanted to see you tonight. Holy smokes. Maybe I can borrow Jed's car. Do you have a nickel for the telephone? Sure. But it'll cost you 50 cents. You are a robber. Yeah. And put your slippers on.
Got it picked? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let me guess. I bet you couldn't. I picked it out the day we met. I mean, you could start it off with 50 bucks down and... And a ball and chain the first of every month? Well, now I gotta tie it somehow. You don't see me running away, do you? Hmm. Aren't you afraid I might? If I can't hold you, neither can a ring. Johnny, why are you always two steps ahead of tomorrow? Call us rushing? No, I don't mean now. It's about us getting married. I just don't like putting things off. But you're not settled. You said so yourself. Yes, I know. I said a lot of things, but... When you're around, I... I can't stand the idea of letting you go again. Like right now, a few minutes we'll be saying good night. Who knows what'll happen tomorrow? Maybe the break you've been waiting for. Another rave in the sports column. But Is that going to buy us a house? But in time, they'll help you break yeah, into the I professional know, in time, field. Time, time, everything happens in time. Safer than taking shortcuts. What am I going to do? Strike oil with a basketball. There's no price tag on me, Johnny. I want you, nothing else. Why? Look at tonight. A borrowed car, a free glimpse at a ring, the prices on a menu holding me down. It was wonderful. Look, let's stop kidding ourselves. How can I promise any change? I don't even know why you bother with me. I don't think you understand me at all. What's the matter? I thought you wanted me to be a realist. Johnny. Good night, Johnny. Johnny. Hello, Jed. Sure appreciated it. Thanks again. That's all right. Have fun? I'll try it anyway. Trouble with Pat? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Fuck up, kid. We all have our ups and downs. Yeah, where are the ups? Everyone's luck runs out if you don't give it a push once in a while. Isn't that right, Mike? It certainly is. You remember Mike Tapp, don't you, Johnny? Sure, we're old friends. Well, don't just stand there, Jed. Invite the gentleman in. Sure. Come on in, boy. Sit down. Thanks, I like standing. Same old Johnny. What's this all about? Plain necessity. Groceries cost money and you can't eat a basketball. So Mike's got an angle. I know, but you of all people. What's so special about any of us? We gotta make a living, don't we? As long as I don't hurt anybody... What about Becker? Do you think he'd like it? He's winning his games, isn't he? Look at yourself. You've been playing alongside me all season. You didn't notice me tossing points away. When I graduate in June... You know what, Johnny? I'll have a sports equipment store. All clear. Not a penny owing to anyone. Nice feeling to be clear. You ever had that kind of feeling, Johnny? You can look ahead, make plans. Three years from now, when you graduate, you and Pat could... Quit it, will you? Mike's right, Johnny. It's not like losing the game. It's only the points. Yeah, I know, I know. The points. He's tossed at me a million times. Makes it look real easy with that dough dangling under your nose. I didn't put it there. You asked for a job, remember? That was before. What's so different now? Give up eating? Not yet. But I had to give up Pat. Oh, I'm sorry. Regardless of what we were just talking about, you shouldn't have. There's a lot of things I shouldn't have done. Then try a new way. Just once. No, I wouldn't know how. Look, look, just watch Jed. You don't even have to miss a basket. Let him take the ball away from you once in a while. That's right. Just watch me. You can hardly tell the difference. Okay, I'll watch. But I'm not promising anything. Is that clear? Of course. Anything you say. I guess I'd better go. Uh, can I give you a lift? No, thanks. I'll walk. Why walk? Here's a little cab there. 
Thanks, I like walking. It's healthier. Take it, kid. No strength. What's that mean? Just that. Only do me a favor. Stop reading a certain sports columnist. He's a guy that takes himself much too seriously. Jed was following Taft's pattern. At first, Johnny just watched. No one could tell whether this was deliberate unless you were a mind reader or Johnny Long. Yeah, he put on the blinkers and raced straight ahead. The fix was in. During the second game of the series, he tried it himself. It was easy. A little short on the swing, that's all. Just like Jed said, the first was the hardest. From here on in, it would be easy. So Johnny Long missed baskets and let the ball get away. Not too often, but just enough. While Mike Taft kept pulling the strings. Johnny. By this time, there'd been enough of these to make Johnny reach a long-awaited decision. Yeah, the time had come. Johnny Long, cash customer. Would you care to insure the ring, sir? No, I'll, I'll leave that up to her. How about an inscription? There's plenty of room. Yes, by all means. Um, just put, uh, all my love, always. J.L. to P.D. J.L. to P.D. Yes, sir. Well, when will I be ready? This afternoon, sir. Good. I'll be back, say, around 5 o'clock. Fine. Uh, just one moment, sir. Don't you want a receipt? Was that necessary? It's for your protection. Name, please. Uh, Walker. Um, J. Walker. Yes, Mr. Walker. The address? Oh, you won't need it. Uh, I'll be back in a little while. As you say, sir. Fine. Thanks very much. Anything wrong? That gentleman who just bought the thousand dollar diamond calls himself Walker, yet he wants the ring initial JL. Maybe it's a nickname. <laughs> In initials? Besides, he looks familiar. He looks familiar to me, too. Wait a minute. I saw his picture in today's paper on the sports page. On the sports page? That's strange. Why, well, yes, there he is. That's him. Johnny Long, JL. Since when do kid basketball players get that kind of money? Yeah, since when could any of these boys afford a thousand dollar ring? And for cash at that. Things like that warrant attention. I was afraid I'd never see this place again. I wouldn't have set foot in it without you. Well, there's no other place. Especially considering the occasion. Occasion? Um, it's kind of warm in here, isn't it? Oh, I think it's perfect. You know, uh, in Europe, a gentleman would top off such occasions by uh, kissing a lady's hand. Well, why not? No, the left hand. What's the matter with this one? Well, I have a left hand kiss. Let's have that kiss. I have a feeling it's neither right nor left, but underhand. On earth did you ever? No questions, please. Uh, there's an inscription, see? There. There. It's so much more than I hoped for. I don't know what to say. Well, what do you mean? Nothing, Johnny, only I... I hope you remembered what we said about no shortcuts. Aren't you pleased with it? I'm very pleased with it. Well then, let's not pick happiness apart, huh? 
Let's just hang on to it. I want to very much. Good. Well, I think what we can use now is a little change of scene. Got a minute? Sure. Hi, Mother. What's on your mind? Listen, I, um, I've been thinking. Healthy habit. It's about our agreement. What about it? Well, I'm pulling out. All right. You told Mike? No. no I thought I'd tell you first. I brought this on. Well, Pat and I are engaged, and I want it to be right. But marriage is right without money. You'd be surprised how many couples have managed without Mike Taft. Yeah, maybe so. Only isn't gonna like it. Well, he's got no beef. I've given him his money's worth. I'm quitting as of right now, and that's all there is to it. I hope you know what you're doing. I do. Johnny tried to play it clean, straight from the heart. In an effort to make up for his temporary slackening, he made more baskets than ever to everyone's delight, except maybe the few who had different ideas. His college won the right to play for the championship. Hello, stranger. Long time no see. Not long enough. <laughs> We're not back to that again, are we, Johnny? We certainly are. You're a strange boy. I never have been quite able to figure you out. Then why try? Well, I'm afraid I'll have to. You see, you represent quite an investment to me. And when the dividends stop coming in, I like to know why. Hasn't Jed told you? Oh, yes, some sort of silliness about you and Pat. But that doesn't make sense. You've done extremely well, Johnny. So have you. True, true. That's why I don't intend to stop now. In case you didn't understand, Mike, I'm through. You're never through, young man. It's only the beginning. You're in too deep to get out now. Is that all? Only half. There's a game tomorrow night, a special game, and you're going to play it a special way. I'm not a man of violence, Johnny. Don't make me one. Look, Mike, I'm shaking all over. <laughs> Hello, Miss Courtney. How are you? Fine. How's Pat? Oh, she's just fine, thanks. We're getting married. You are? Well, that's wonderful. But that's only natural. You're Aries and she's Sagittarius. But don't get married until Jupiter is on the cusp. Also, make sure it's under the money sign. Nice to have seen you, Miss Courtney. What's wrong now? Slight case of love sickness. Oh, well, that's all right. Everything will be fine when Venus moves into his house. I'll stick with the dollar. Move over. The showdown came closer. The league championships pitted Brook College against State. The winner would get a crack at the national title. Nat was working up another acute case of indigestion. With 15 years of basketball under his belt, he was still as nervous as his kids. This was the first time I began to wonder whether Johnny was laying down. It's tough enough to tell any deliberate slip under ordinary circumstances. But with Johnny's peculiar style on top of everything else, there was absolutely no telling. What a dribble. Don't say that. He's a nice boy. still mean nothing, just the beginning of a narrow margin, the kind the fixers like. And there wasn't much time to go far beyond. 
Apparently Taft had no hand in this one. Do you think he had before? Frankly, I wouldn't allow myself to think about it. Well, you must have some opinion. I don't know. I wish I could be sure. When we meet Johnny later, maybe, maybe I could make him talk. Final score, State 66, Brook 60. Sunday magazine. anything in the world. Come on, fellas, let's get inside. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's just being nice, giving me a chance to make my pitch. Oh, seriously, there's something wrong. He's never been this late. You're going to have to get used to it, the price of fame. No, take me, for instance. I'm just a simple guy. No fans, no strings. Or maybe too simple. You know, in some ways, I wish I were in his shoes. But then you'd lose your dependability. Who would Johnny and I have to lean on? Mr. Faraday? Yeah. There's a call for you. Thanks. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah, this is Faraday. Is he all right? When did it happen? Yeah, I'll be right over. Johnny, something's wrong. No, nothing serious, just a little scrap at the gym. You sure? I wouldn't fool you, would I? You go on home and wait. The paper called me to cover it. We'll call you from there. Let's go. I still don't get it. I'd like a word with Johnny, fellas. He's all yours. Aiming for the headlines, huh? I'd prefer not to. That's exactly why I'm here. I made a deal with the boys and got myself an exclusive. Thanks. Seems like you're always giving and never taking. I mean, this isn't copy. What I want to know is strictly between you and me. Look, it's about those thugs. I never saw them before in my life. You sure? What do you mean, am I sure? Look, I know it's none of my business, kid, but... Then why make it? Let's drop the toughy act. Are you going to talk about it or not? Look, there's nothing to talk about. A couple of hoodlums roughed me up. That's all there is to it. Just didn't like the way you looked, huh? I didn't have time to ask him. Why didn't you ask Mike Taft? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I don't know why I bother, but I'll cover for you with the papers. Otherwise, you're on your own. Pete. Yeah? Does Pat know? Sure. We were waiting for you when I got the call. She's at home. Look... Would you call her? I've got to do some thinking. Think carefully. No fast buck is worth losing a friend. Coffin. Well, this is an honor. The big man himself. 
I told you I was not a man of violence, Johnny. You gave me no choice. What's next, the river? No, we do things more sensibly. Yeah, sure. I slipped in the bathtub. Hurt? Only when I chuckle. <laughs> it's too bad there's nothing funny about the big game. A nick like that should slow you down. Make it easier for you to spread the points. You never give up, do you? Would you, Johnny? Would you give up anything you really wanted? Like Pat, for instance? You leave her out of this. I don't know whether I can. If you don't play ball. Why, well, you dirty son. Your side, Johnny. Remember your side. We don't want you to spread too many points. I thought you did things differently. Oh, we do, we do. Completely up to date. Psychological persuasion, I call it. Okay. You can save all that fancy lingo. I was tied and wrapped the day you met me. Now you're making sense. Pat would like that. You don't know Pat. She's a woman, isn't she? What woman wouldn't like, uh, shall we say, $2,000? Makes a nice start for a honeymoon. Not this honeymoon. There'll be no fancy starts that I can't follow through. Take the dough and buy Lily a new hat. You mean that you... Yeah, yeah. Just one more game, for free. But lay off Pat. You have my word. Yeah, he had his word, whatever that was worth. Me, I had some words of my own. And I had to get them on paper in time for the big game. Any big game makes good copy. But this one had everything at stake. So my words had to be right. Right enough to get through to Johnny. I wanted him to know that it wasn't anymore just a matter between him and me. It had become a matter of all the other Johnnies who might have the same trials, heartaches, and temptations. I put the spot on Johnny. Still calling him the champion, trying to stir a sense of responsibility in him, and hoping that maybe I could shame him into living up to the hopes Nat and I had for him when we picked him out of the ranks at the high school. Look, Johnny, it's all ready. Mr. Martin fixed the sleeves and everything. You look very nice. I showed it to all the kids. I told them you bought it for me so that I could go see you in the big game. Mickey, I'm sorry, but I don't want you to go to the game. Gee, Johnny, you promised. Yes, I know, but, well, I can't look after you while I'm playing. And you said I could go with Mr. Fairday. I just don't want you to see the game. Not even on television? No. No, not even on television. I'm afraid your Christmas wish brought me bad luck. I've been playing pretty badly. You can't play badly. I know you can't. I don't care what they've been saying. Who's they? Oh, the kids. I told them about Christmas, and then you're going to make all the baskets for me. And they say you've been missing some. Well, sure. No one can make them every time. But tonight, Johnny. What about tonight? Okay, Mickey, you can come to the game as we planned. I won't miss a one. Not a one. It had been a busy day for me, and it was going to be an even busier night. Nat was worried. Didn't even have time for a pre-game snack. Hiya, Johnny. Hiya, Pete. How do you feel? Great. It's a tough team tonight. Good excuse for a close game. Listen, we'll win by so many points, your typewriter will have trouble keeping up with us. See you later. I believed him. And I began to feel better. Pat had made arrangements to borrow the car of a friend a few blocks away, but she never got that far. Fellas, you 
good shape. Learn all your plays. Everything is okay. This is a tough team. Remember what they did to us the first half last year? I don't want that to happen. This is too rough. Saved a seat for Pat. Johnny knew it. Luggage, Jed. What's wrong? We've got some rough boys out there. I'll speed it up. Say, Ned, listen, do me a favor, will you? Ask Pete where's Pat. He was supposed to bring her tonight. Right. into you anyhow. You know darn well what I mean. Three to 38. State leads at the end of the first half over a fast-driving Aggie team. All right, now, if there's anybody doesn't want to play the second half, let me know now. We haven't been playing too well the first half. What's your trouble? You have a little trouble with this man out there? You know how to handle him. Five, three minutes. All right, let's go. go. Let's go. I called her mother and she said Pat left for the game. She's left? Thanks, Pete. the Johnny who promised to be a way ahead of my typewriter. Maybe because somebody was way ahead of him. was getting conspicuously narrow and very much under what had been expected. Second? Yeah. Lieutenant Garrett of the Vice Squad. Vice Squad? What's up? Well, this concerns illegal gambling. So what do you want from me? Pull out Johnny Long. Johnny Long? What for? He's been throwing your games for weeks now. Oh, you can't tell me that. Look at him. He's in there. He's winning. Sure, he's winning, only as much as he's told to. It's practically impossible to spot on the court. If it hadn't been for some slip-up on the outside, we might never have known. Go in and tell Johnny I want him. Okay, Coach. What's wrong, Coach? I'm sick, Johnny. Sorry, son, I have to ask you some questions. What's the matter? 
water. Why are they taking him out? I don't know. Section C. I'll be back in a minute. Let's get out of here. Sit down, Mr. Taft. I know. The kid's been asking for you. But I've got orders. They'll be taking him outside. Any evidence? Enough to get them all. All of what? Something had happened to you. I guess it's better this way. It makes it easier. Johnny, why didn't you tell me? That's what I'm here for. Oh, I don't know, honey. I don't know. Why don't you check with us later? I doubt if she'll want to. Why don't you wait and see? from the jewelers. You mean my ring? Yeah, the ring. Looks like it's going to cost him more than he figured. Yeah. It's going to cost him much more than he had figured.